Tonight on Wide Angle, Cuba, almost 50 years since Castro took power. Pioneers for communism. We will be like El Che. And young athletes still bring the revolution to the rig. If the U.S. attacks us in this sad moment, we will defend our country. Socialist ideals and Olympic dreams. Put up your hands if you're going to be national champion. Victory is your duty. Next on Wide Angle. I'm Daljit Dhaliwal in Miami. Welcome to Wide Angle. Tonight we bring you ringside to the Havana Boxing Academy. For the first time, a Western documentary crew has been granted access to this legendary Cuban institution. We follow two young athletes during a crucial time of transition in their small communist nation as it weathers five decades of an economic embargo by the United States. After the film, I'll speak with Dr. Andy Gomez, a Cuban exile and scholar, about the post-Fidel era and the future of Cuba-U.S. relations. The revolution in Cuba was supposed to bring change, positive change. I dare to say that Fidel Castro betrayed the intent of the Cuban revolution. Stay with us. In Cuba, they talk about la lucha, the fight. It means not only the contest in the ring, but also the struggle of life itself. <laughs> to promote Cuba's image and ideology on the world stage, Fidel Castro created sports academies that produce winning athletes. Olympian fighters of the future are trained at boxing academies like this one in Havana. Boys as young as nine are groomed for victory. They may dream of Olympic gold, but first must win their national championships, the big event of every year. The rivalry is fierce. The pressure on the boys intense. After its socialist revolution, Cuba appears to have progressed little since the 1950s. In spite of the poverty on this island of 11 million people, Fidel has achieved a true sporting revolution and built a generally healthy, literate nation. As a testament to Cuba's passion for boxing, most provincial towns boast their own boxing rings. Every province trains teams of boys to compete in the annual national championships. Mi papá, Felipe Martínez, fue campeón panamericano. Centroamericano, mundial y olímpico. Yo quisiera ser, aunque sea mejor que él o igual que él. Ten-year-old Cristian Martinez attends the Havana Boxing Academy with many of the country's best young boxers. They live in six days a week under a strict regime of four hours daily training, combined with a diet that leaves them perpetually hungry. During the day, the boys attend a local school 
for a full schedule of classes. Similar academies operate for many sports throughout Cuba, but as its boxers have won the most Olympic medals, these institutions have special status. Right after school, Christian is back in the academy, where training grinds on until nightfall. Only 10 of these 24 boys will make it to the championships, one for each weight division. Christian has a talent that you see goes with a firm step. Y creo que en el futuro debe ser uno de los, de los, de los 48 kilos de Cuba. After winning the championships eight years in a row, last year Havana lost their trophy. Eh, fue una, una derrota tremenda porque eh, yo era el que, si yo ganaba, eh, eh, Ciudadana cogía el primer lugar y. It's a day that still haunts Christian. El campeonato nacional es como decir la gran olimpiada que ellos esperan. El año que terminamos ahora sufrimos un revés, cogimos segundo lugar. Es un dolor tan grande que con palabras no puedo, no puedo explicarlo. Vamos, 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 no pare, no pare, no pare. No pare, no pare, no pare. Trazamos nuevas metas y una de las, de las metas es ganar el torneo nacional con récord de medalla. Head coach Josvani Bonachea lives with the boys at the academy. He makes many sacrifices to train these future champions. He barely sees his own family and earns only $15 a month. Mi carrera como boxeador no fue una carrera larga. Se me creó en el abdomen un pastón apendicular. El cirujano determina que no puedo seguir practicando boxeo. Eso es lo que debe depositar, todo ese sueño que tiene, depositarlo en, en, en sus atletas. Las aspiraciones que, que, él, que él no pudo tener, dárselas a sus alumnos y tratar de que en ellos. Muy bien, de uno en fondo, para el baño. No se baña los años, mírale la espalda. Mírale la espalda. Que el profesor no se baña. Que el profesor no ha engañado. Todo Para mí, Giovanni representa mucho. Es como un padre, porque me ayuda no solamente en el deporte, sino en la vida cotidiana. No, no, yo no puedo estar No. Bonachea enjoys his lighter moments with the boys, but he always keeps them focused on winning the championship. Yo lo que siento eh, por esos niños es algo tan grande que al comparar no puede expresarlo, ya que es lo mismo que me preguntara, que usted me preguntara, ¿qué siento yo por mi hijo? Lo compare, siente por un hijo es incalculable. 24 y medio. Muy bien, campeón, felicidades de vuelta. The Junior League is divided into 10 narrow weight divisions, only two kilos or about four pounds apart. To stay within their division, the boys must adhere to a strict diet. Three times a day, Bonachea checks their weight. Santo, Santos Urguez and his weight are getting the coaches close attention. He's been struggling to stay under 32 kilos, just 70 pounds. Santo era uno de los atletas que teníamos previsto para el torneo nacional, pero tiene el problema de que no es capaz de soportar el rigor del peso. 
tiene que ser más, un poco más voluntarioso. Eh, tratar de, de ambicionar. Bueno, ¿pueden llorar los padres con el peso? Sí, sí. Bro, pe pesé de con los... Con los... Con los... Y después corrí, ahora estoy en 35 y medio. Tú lo que tienes que hacer es... Comer poquito. Es que tú llegas, vamos a comerte todo. Y tú dices, no, no, come, come poquito y al otro día... Uh, te vuelvo a comer. ¿Es que vine a la escuela y no comí? Será la que me complace. Como si nunca hay que olvidar... Santos makes up songs about his mother. She died when he was just six years old. Tienen los padres la visita y no es su mamá. Aquí, mira, Martín. Aquí la hay. Por aquí, mira. Aquí, para que tenga uso sueño. Sueña con ser campeón olímpico. Cabrón. Vamos, campeón. Te sueñen con dulces, angelitos y hasta mañana. Entrenamiento fuerte mañana. As the boys head for school, Cuba is preparing to celebrate Castro's 80th birthday. For many months now, Fidel has been ill and has not been seen in public. After 48 years of single-party rule, public events revolve around the founder and figurehead of the regime. The party faithful turn out in force in Revolution Square to celebrate the Comandante's birthday. Anti-American slogans dominate, along with praise of the ailing leader. But Castro does not appear. For most Cubans, Castro has always been present. Some expect that he always will be. Christian Martinez is on his way home for the weekend. The boys get one day off a week to see their families. His parents are divorced. Christian arrives for lunch with his mother and brother. The Martinez family is loyal to Castro, and they accept Cuba's official version of events, such as America's recruitment of troops for the war in Iraq. After lunch, Christian visits his father, 
the former champion boxer, Luis Felipe Martinez. He won titles and recognition the world over, but champions like Christian's father, who choose to remain in Cuba, only win fame, not fortune. Mira, este es importante. Tú sabes cosa es este, este es preolímpico de Montreal. Cogiste plata. Cogiste plata. Ahí me... Lo más yo quisiera es que si quiere el, el, se estudiara y sacara una carrera. No me importa cuál sea. Que sea un muchacho que esté preparado para la vida, para el mañana. Puesto que el deporte es un momento solamente. Every family in Cuba has suffered the effects of 46 years of an economic blockade by the United States. Life has become still harder since the Soviet Union collapsed in the early 90s and Cuba lost its economic support. 15 years of deprivation followed that Castro calls the special period. For the Urguayas family, life is a daily struggle. Yo soy una persona que, que por lo regular me gusta alimentarme bien. A veces me hemos visto en una situación que no se ha podido. Yo cojo, no le digo nada y me voy y no como para que los niños no vean. Guardo, dale. Melena, guardo, dale. Melena. Así súper difícil. ¿Por qué? las condiciones de vida en que han vivido ellos, que no han sido como otros niños, que han tenido juguetes, que han tenido un televisor, que han tenido eh, ropas, eh, ¿me entiendes? Siempre han estado, como se dice normalmente, eh, pobres. Si no quieres ir, Mi abuela me da dinero para comprarme silla. Eh, algún cosquito y cómprate queco. Voy a comprar... Pizza, porque a mí me gustan mucho las pizzas. También. Eso era lo que me hacía engordar. Melina. The family is hoping Santos will grow up to be a breadwinner, but his first concern is to make the team, and he will only do it if he can keep his weight down. Se gana o no se gana. Levante la mano los campeones nacionales. ¡Qué chamboa! Va a tirar el primero y que ha ganado, eh. Bien, de pie. Dale rápido. Santos is finding it difficult to keep up with the punishing training regime. Sano Santo hoy trabajó de maravilla. Hoy con él un aplauso y trabajó bien. Lo que pasa es que no estaba adaptado a trabajar a ese ritmo. Y le cogió el conteo. Pues trabajó bastante bien. Santos has decided he can't take it anymore. 
The 10-year-old wants to leave. His father comes in to try to talk sense into his son. It's another big date, the Senior National Boxing Championships, named after Castro's victory at the Bay of Pigs. Bonachea is taking his boys to see their national team heroes in action. Some graduated from their Havana Academy and are now the country's top fighters. Castro's ideal of athlete revolutionaries. Rising stars like Emilio Correa Jr. are an inspiration to the boys who dream one day of making the national team themselves. Aún dentro de su recuperación, el comandante jefe no ha olvidado el bolseo y nos ha mandado mensajes de mucha alegría, de mucha satisfacción y de, mucho, y de muchos deseos de continuar adelante en esta labor. Yet there's a political cloud hanging over tonight's tournament. Three of Cuba's Olympic gold medalists of 2004, who should all be here fighting, have defected. It's a major blow for Castro, for the country, and for the national team coaches. Una decisión muy difícil. Como todo el mundo sabe que la familia es parte del cuerpo de uno, pero bueno, es así. Pero tuvimos que tomar esta decisión porque era lo mejor que teníamos en nuestra vida para poder ayudar a la misma familia. Eh, los traidores cuando abandonan su padre hay que decírselo a los jóvenes que vienen detrás de ellos. Y se lo hemos explicado, lo han entendido muy bien, lo han acogido con un ánimo muy grande. Yo opino que esos bolsillos no pensaron en, en nuestro comandante, no pensaron en nosotros que, que tanto apoyo que le dimos no supieron aprovecharlo y que no, y nos defraudaron totalmente. For some Cuban boxers, the promise of defection and professional purses is too tempting to resist. Others remain steadfastly loyal to their country. Cubans take pride in the fact that every child has equal access to a good education. Right after the revolution, Castro launched a campaign to teach every peasant to read and write. The country now boasts nearly 100% literacy. Vamos a ir al 
Schools are remarkably well equipped, and most students are expected to go to college. Health and education are seen as two of Castro's real achievements. Central to the curriculum is learning every detail of the revolution that transformed the country. Drama meets history as the children reenact milestones of the revolution. Every year, they act out the story of the school's hero, Jose Antonio Echevarria, who died in a revolutionary battle. The national championships are just weeks away, but the boys must still attend school. Even the best young fighters, like Cristian Martinez, are expected to keep up their studies. Saludos. Ten days away from the national championships, the training is ramping up. Yosvani Bonachea rallies his boys against coach Toki Guerra Saldivas and his Matanzas team, who took the trophy from them last year. Bonachea's training regime leaves the boys exhausted, but the hard work isn't over. The boys now compete in the final bouts to help decide who will go to the nationals. Santos Urguellas in the red corner has recovered some of his form. In the next bout, Christian is in blue. He catches a blow to his nose, which starts to bleed, and the fight is stopped. He knows very well that in a championship bout, any sign of blood would stop the fight, and he would automatically lose. normal. <laughs> El proceso de seleccionamiento para el campeonato nacional es bastante complejo. Eso es lo más difícil. Eso es como preguntarle a un padre a qué hijo quiere más. Porque esos niños se te van metiendo a uno adentro que tal, tal, talmente parece que, que son nuestros hijos. Yo los quiero como tal. Y es muy duro a la hora de definir quién va y quién se queda.
Dale, que mañana es un día bueno. Decision day has arrived when the boys find out who will represent the city of Havana at the national championship. Only half these boys will be selected for the team. With De Garcia y el compañero Alexi Guibel. Cristian has made the team. Santos has not. Y no quisiera, yo sé que en ocasiones mucha gente quiere llorar. Eso es normal, yo también he pasado por esto. No quiero que no se, no se despidan ustedes sin un abrazo, sin un beso, sin un. No sé si un apretón de mano. Those who don't make it will have to wait and work for another full year for their chance. Santos was having too much trouble keeping to the weight limit for the club to risk sending him. Santos termina desde el momento en que él pierde la confianza en sí mismo. Se elimina desde el momento de que él no no es capaz de de sacrificarse como sacrifican los demás. Este es un deporte en el cual eh, el arma fundamental es el sacrificio, es la fuerza de voluntad del atleta. At the rival boxing academy of Matanzas province, last year's upset national champions are training hard to retain their title. Their coach, Toki Guerra Sardivas, is confident his team can beat Havana again. Giovanni, this is the demo for you. Because we are the champions, we are going to be the champions. This is for Ciudadana. And if you are Ciudadana? Pico Suena! And if you are Ciudadana? Pico Suena! Look, Giovanni, look at that. They are looking. They are looking. Well, he said to the commissioner, not to me. He said, this is what he is going to be. Because the people are going to be Leaving Havana, the coaches urge Bonachea's boys to win back their trophy. Yo tenía interés en en ir al torneo nacional. Eso era lo que más quería. The team travels to most tournaments on public transportation, but for the championships, the state provides a bus. This year, the tournament is in Piñar del Rio province, four hours away. Over the next week, 80 aspiring Olympic champions will stay in this remote country school as they fight for national titles. Hay que, que, que coger y que esa gente pague. 
el sacrificio de la mañanita de ustedes. Que paguen el sacrificio de hacer el peso. Que paguen por los compañeros que se quedaron allá. Que usted está representando hoy. As Bonachea gives his boys a final pep talk, Toki Guerras Arribas is already putting his Matanzas team through their paces. Politics is never far from the boxing ring. Each team wins points for their dorm displays honoring the revolution. Even their team cheers are scored. Throughout the Cuban sports system, athletes must demonstrate allegiance to the revolution if they want to be chosen for teams. It's not so easy to reach Consolacion del Sur, a small country town in the center of the tobacco region. Under Castro, private car ownership has become increasingly rare. And since the fall of the USSR, horse-drawn transport has made a comeback. Most homes here are still without running water and telephones. Many families rely on money from relatives who have left Cuba and now work abroad. The tournament takes place in the town hall. It was a dance hall before the revolution. There's not a drop of liquor left at the old bar, but there's plenty of fighting spirit. In the first fight, Christian Martinez is up against a boxer from the host province. The rival teams exchange taunts as they prepare to fight. Bouts last just two and a half minutes, and points are awarded for each punch landed. Although boxing is an individual sport, Cubans passionately root for their province. Most of the support is for the local team, because travel is so expensive and difficult. The panel of judges awards the first fight to Christian. Other city of Havana fighters have not been so successful. Losing after years hard training is devastating for these young boxers, but it also jeopardizes the team's chances of winning the championships overall. Bonachea knows he cannot lose many more fights. In this match, the city of Havana fighter is in the blue corner. Close fights bring out passionate regional rivalry.
It's the last day of the competition, and Christian has made it to the final. Just before the fight, Christian's mother unexpectedly arrives. Christian's father has also made the trip up from Havana, hitching several rides along the way to see his son in the final. After losing last year's final, Christian, in red, knows he has to win. Christian's individual victory also secures the team trophy for the city of Havana. They've fulfilled Bonachea's ambition, winning seven out of ten finals. He has become the most successful coach in the history of the tournament, winning the title for a record ninth time. Toki Guerra Sardivas and his Matanzas team must go home empty-handed and desolate.
On May Day in Havana, the new national champions continue their celebrations by leading a section of the parade. For Bonachea, personal and national pride are mingled. He knows that on his shoulders is a champion who in 2012 could be fighting in the Olympics. But by then, what kind of country will Christian and the other young boxers be fighting for? In five years, will this be a Cuba without Castro? Will the athletes still be revolutionaries? And will victory be their duty or their payday? Wide Angle continues with Daljit Dhaliwal. Dr. Andy Gomez, welcome to Wide Angle. My pleasure. Welcome to Miami. <laughs> Thank you. So, Andy, what do you make of the film that we just saw? The film is very important because it portrays uh, the social aspects of Cuba and what it is like today. It takes away uh, where most of the concentration has been, which is a political system that has succeeded or has failed. So from a social point of view, uh, I think it's a very, very good documentary. Talk about your personal connection to Cuba. I was born in Cuba. I left when I was six and a half years old. Uh, my father worked for Coca-Cola all his life. We were transferred to Caracas, Venezuela, uh, three days before Bay of Pigs, April 14th, 1961. He was already under house arrest for participating in so-called counter-revolutionary methods. When we got to the airport, he was arrested, and a family friend who was a colonel in the armed forces at that time took him out of the cell and put him on the plane and we came to Miami in 1965. So I, I grew up in Miami most of my life, living and listening to next Christmas in Havana. Well, I'm going to be 53 years old. I'm still waiting for the next Christmas right. in Havana. So can we safely assume that you are not pro-Castro? I am not pro-Castro. I am not pro-communism. Uh, but we have to understand, most of Cubans in 1958, given the conditions that existed, were pro-revolution. We had a corrupt president by the name of Fulgencio Batista. There was no equality. There was economic corruption, political corruption, left and right. The revolution in Cuba was supposed to bring change, positive change. I dare to say that Fidel Castro betrayed the intent of the Cuban revolution. But his policies must resonate with the people, whether it's enviable health care system, education. Well, I want to come back Cubans to... Cubans love that, don't they? Well, they do and they don't. It's the fear of the unknown. Take a look at what's happened in East and Central Europe after change, after transition started. The older generation has become nostalgic for the way that things were. Not that they were better, but they knew how to behave within the box. Two of Cuba's successes of the revolution was its healthcare system and its education system. Cuba today has one of the largest dropout rates in higher education. There's no future. You can make more money driving a taxi cab for tourists in Cuba than you can being a doctor. The healthcare system in Cuba, I dare to say if it was that good, it almost killed Fidel Castro in the first operation. They had to bring doctors from Spain to try to figure out what was wrong with him. How much of this is to do with the effects of the embargo, which has ostensibly been what American foreign policy towards Cuba has been for well, the last 50 it, it, years? Americans can't travel there. They can't invest there. They can be sued if they do anything to the contrary. The idea of the U.S. embargo or any economic embargo like this one is to try to put a noose around the island where you actually create a scenario that it will explode. Society will explode because the conditions are so limited. But it hasn't happened, has it? It hasn't happened. Because I don't know of any economic embargo that has actually toppled a dictatorship. And for many years, Washington, both Republicans and Democrats, have sold the idea of the embargo to try to bring about change in Cuba, trying to somehow please the Cuban-American community by making promises that they cannot keep. Fidel is 80 years old. He has turned over the running of the country to his brother, Raul. Temporarily, supposedly. Who is this power behind the throne? Raul is 75 years old, uh, an orthodox communist, which Fidel was not at his early ages. 
Raul is not Fidel. And sure, he's not as charismatic as Fidel, but Raul has been next to Fidel for almost 50 years plus. He's been the implementer, but he's going to have to deliver positive change to the Cuban people. Is Raul Castro interested in what's happening in China? Has he been impressed well, by know, that whole economic model, but still the Communist Party retains political question. control? That's a very good question, because you hear all the time, even from his first trip to China in the early 90s, Raul came back and met with Fidel and told Fidel that he had been very impressed what he saw in China, that Cuba needed to adopt economic reforms. There's something happening in Cuba today. Raul Castro, one of his first and few speeches was to the Federation of University Students, which traditionally and historically has been a very powerful symbol. He challenged them and told them that it was his responsibility as much as theirs to improve the bureaucratic system of the government in place. In other words, criticizing the Cuban government without using the word, it has failed. And if he doesn't make those economic reforms? And I would dare to say that if he cannot control society, then the majority of Cuba's youth will look at every possible avenue to leave the island. What kind of numbers are we talking about here? In the worst case scenario, within the first year, half a million Cubans trying to leave the island in every possible direction. And is this a scenario that we're prepared for in the United States? Well, I can tell you right now that the coordination between federal, state, and local government, it's better than I have seen uh, in the years before. Uh, I was allowed to participate in some of the exercises. I have given them my input. For instance, it's not Cubans taking to the water. How about 100,000 Cubans rushing the Guantanamo base? in Oriente, in Santiago de Cuba. They hadn't thought about that? No, they had not thought about that. Did so that now, shock you? Now, now they're building in a 10,000 bed facilities. What about Cubans rushing foreign embassies in Havana? Well, Fidel is 80 years old. Mm -hmm. um, Raul is 75. Shouldn't and, we be preparing for another well, you know, succession? It, no, I think what we should be preparing is for um, a transition from the succession. And the difference there is a transition to something, and that something needs to be defined by the Cuban people on the island. Are you talking about democracy? No, I'm talking about change. You cannot build in Cuba, after almost 50 years of totalitarian regime, democracy overnight. All I want is for the Cuban people to have the freedom to make their choices. I might not like them, but at least I'll support it. Dr. Andy Gomez, thank you very much for joining us. It's on been Wide my Angle. pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. Wide Angle. Visit Wide Angle online. Learn more about Cuba's Olympic boxing victories. Explore the art of the revolution's propaganda. Then go behind the scenes with the filmmaker. It's all at pbs.org. <laughs> Mm-hmm.